Hi and welcome to Duality Repair. This is the Carver TFM6CB power amplifier. This unit was sent in by a viewer with the complaint that when the unit's been cold for a while or off, once you turn it on, uh, there's quite a long delay before you hear any output. And I've already tested and validated this concern and it seems like now that I've warmed the unit up I can't get it to fail again, so I'll show you what I mean. So it's working just fine right now. I think I'm going to let this sit for 5 or 10 minutes and then we'll retry it and see if we can replicate the issue. I waited 10 minutes, I powered it back on and as you can see I have nothing from the right channel. Left channel is working just fine. Not sure how I can make that right channel engage. You can get it to cut in and out by, uh, there it goes. Yeah, just tapping on the top cover gets it to uh, engage and disengage. Give it the old calibrated tap, and it starts to behave. Obviously there's a problem with this. Let's take the cover off. Aside from the unit being very, very dirty, it's in good physical condition. Let's take a quick walk around. We have the power transformer on the left, a toroidal style. The power supply board is on the bottom left here. There's two taps off of the secondary of the transformer. The first tap is uh, double fused here, and it's uh, full wave rectified with these four diodes and this is going to be the the high voltage or the rail voltage for the amplifier section the second tab of the transformer has just a single fuse it also has this really tiny bridge rectifier and it looks like this is going to supply the voltage for the various LEDs in the unit as well as for the relay circuit so I'll move to the amplifier section there's an obvious symmetry about the center the top half of the board deals with the amplification for one channel, and the bottom half deals with the amplification of the other channel. Uh, there's a few areas of concern um, that I see. One general area of concern is the electrolytic capacitors. Now these are all fairly decent quality, but uh, they are all original, and they're all very, very old, and so they're all going to need to be replaced. There's not that many. I'll get those replaced. Another area of concern is the thermal compound on the main transistors here. So you can see the five of them on this side. There's, of course, five on this side as well for the other channel. So there's plenty of thermal compound behind each, as you can see. But I can tell it's getting really, really dry and uh, brittle. And so if we want to improve the longevity of this unit, I'll uh, remove all of the old thermal compound and apply new thermal compound. That'll help, definitely. Another thing I'll want to do is remove and clean both of the volume potentiometers up here. That looks like that'll be a simple job. And regarding our actual issue, or at least the known issue that we have, since it seems to be physical, as in you saw me tapping on the cover and I could get it to uh, engage and disengage the output of one of the channels, I'm really suspicious of this relay here. And there's actually two relays in this one package, so this relay or this dual relay package um, handles the uh, relay uh, for both this channel and this channel. And so I wouldn't doubt that if we took the cover off we'd see some corrosion and uh, no doubt that that would cause the inter an intermittent issue, connection issue. So this could be our problem or part of our problem. And you'll notice that the package of the relay is pretty high and the, uh, the you know it's a low profile unit so the cover is very very close to the top of this relay. It's possible that my hitting the cover was tapping the, the cover of the relay and so that could have caused it to engage and disengage although we won't be able to tell until I get that open. 
And then the last thing that I'm thinking is, again, since it seems to be a physical issue, is that we could have a weak or broken or cold solder joint on the amplifier board. The only way to tell is to remove this entire section and investigate and inspect each solder joint. It looks like it won't be too difficult. I'll have to remove all of the uh, tie wraps, uh, tying these wires to this uh, heat sink. And then there's four or six screws mounting it to the chassis. Should be able to remove it and we can inspect. It was pretty easy to remove the amplifier module from the unit. I inspected all of the uh, solder joints on the back and they all look really, really good. So no cause for concern as far as that goes. Now that I have the module out of the unit, I want to start by investigating this relay here. So I think the easiest way to do this is to desolder it and remove it from the amplifier module so we can take the cover off and take a really close inspection. All right, our relay has been removed from the unit, and before we even remove the cover, you can see there's a lot of buildup internally. It looks like it's mostly on the AC side here, but um, definitely a lot of buildup. It's been a while since I've opened one of these, but I believe it's pretty simple. You have this little white tab on either end, and if you use a flathead pushing on either white tab, the cover should come off. With the relay cover off, we can see just how much dust and buildup there was inside of there. That's not normal, and I'm going to have to clean that up really well before we reinstall it. The relay itself, most of it looks to be in good physical condition. The coil looks okay. All of the solder joints on the contacts are okay. The spring seems to have good tension, so that's okay. Our big problem is going to come into the contacts. And so if we look um, down here on the right, we can see one contact. I'm going to call this a fixed contact because it doesn't move. On the left, we also have another fixed contact. If we note the appearance, they look to be uh, similar to a gold color in appearance. Now if we look at the uh, variable, as in position variable contact, the one that I'm moving here, the one's in the center, you can see that they're black in appearance. And so I think that's oxidation that's built up over time. I think that's causing our problem. Uh, the oxidation is going to form an insulative layer on that contact and it's going to build up, it's, it's going to create too much resistance between the variable and the fixed contacts. And so I think that's what's causing our problem. Ideally I'd be able to remove this section with the variable contacts so that I can clean them up with some sort of lightly abrasive uh, material like a, uh, a sandpaper or something like that. I'm not sure if I can remove this or not but I'm going to give it a shot and if I can I'll be back. So yes you can remove that section, all you have to do is remove the spring and this section comes free. The only thing holding these two sections together now are the uh, two wires. And so now that we have it removed, you can see I moved, I removed the uh, variable section. You can see very clearly the difference of these contacts. So the one on the left here has that uh, oxidation built up pretty well and the one on the right looks okay. It's harder to see but the ones on the back look even worse. There's a lot more oxidation on this side. And this side is also really bad. It's tough to get a good angle, but now that I have this removed, I'm going to attempt to clean this off. Again, really lightly. You don't want to change the 
you don't want to grind it down too much and change the physical dimensions. You just want to lightly scuff that oxidation off of the surface. So I'll, I'm going to clean this one up too, even though it doesn't look to be oxidized. I'll clean that up, clean that up. Really, I'll clean all the contacts. I'll even clean these internal contacts here, the, the fixed contacts, even though they look to be okay, just to make sure we're in really good shape. The only thing I could find to clean off the oxidation was this uh, sanding pad here. Although it's not very abrasive at all, I think it was a little too aggressive. So you can see it removed the oxidation from the uh, variable contacts easily, but it scratched up the surfaces quite a bit. It's not ideal for something like this. Really, you just want to remove that oxidation. You don't really want to touch the underlying surface. I'm sure there's people out there who have better and more effective methods for cleaning relay contacts, and uh, if so, please um, enlighten us in the comments. With that said, I think it's going to be just fine. I'm going to finish cleaning this up. I'll clean up the cover, we'll put it back together, and I'll test it uh, before we reinstall it to make sure I did not screw it up. The relay is back together and I'm ready to test. I have my power supply hooked up to the coil. I can actuate it by applying 12 volts DC, so I'll do that now. And you saw it actuate. So let's make sure we're shorted. I'll check the top pins first. That one's good. I'll check the bottom now. That's good as well. So our relay seems to be functioning just fine. I'll get this back into the cover and then we'll reinstall it. On second thought, I'm not going to reuse this relay. Due to the age and the fact that the surface material has been removed from the contacts, which is critical to performance and longevity, I don't trust this. I wouldn't trust this in the unit for more than another one or two years. And so replacements for these are really widely available and inexpensive, so I've ordered a replacement. Before I can remove and replace the old thermal compound, I have to separate the amplifier board from the heatsink assembly. I would say it doesn't really matter what sort of method you use to remove old thermal compound. There's really only two things that I would say you need to remember or take into account. Number one, make sure you completely remove all of the old thermal compound. And number two, don't scuff up the surface of either the back of the transistor or the heatsink. Personally, I use baby wipes for the bulk thermal compound removal. And then I finish with Q-tips and isopropyl alcohol. All right, we're all clean on the heatsink side as well as the back of the transistors on the amplifier board. I didn't notice this till I started cleaning, but behind each transistor is this mica style insulator. Most of them are in pretty good shape. There are a few though that look to be getting brittle and uh, ready to crack, so we don't wanna risk that. I'm gonna replace them with these thermal pads. These are nice because they're, they're flexible, they're durable, and they also require no thermal compound. All right, the amplifier module is back together. The thermal pads look really good. They're going to keep these transistors nice and cool for a long time. I'm going to leave this project for now while I wait for the new capacitors and the relay to come in. I have a few other projects that I can work on in the meantime. So stay tuned for part two where we'll finish the repair and the service and we'll test this.